book two welcome to jackie's literary corner i am jackie and it's time for a bookish update to tell you how my reading is going so once again my reading is continuing to be a little slow this month i mean i, d I did um pick it up a little bit more and that's actually because i'm still very much on the bridgerton season three train obsessing over it and you know and i just decided to slow down on that because it's been giving me anxious feelings and stressing me out and like just I I want to just calm down a little bit and just ease the rest of my journey to part two of season three. I mean I still have watched Sammy Bates. Um, she's a YouTube channel that I that does a lot of I think she mostly does like you know favorite shows shows and movies that she likes. Um. And, and even a little bit of Lady Geneva, she's another channel that does, like, pop culture stuff. Although my opinions kind of line more with, um, Sammy Bates' opinions. And my, like, how my, how I feel about things kind of vibes more with her. So I've been watching a little bit more of her channel. I mean, the other channel, Lady Geneva, is great too. Very entertaining. I like what she has to say, but I just have a preference for the other woman. And, um, I'm still been watching, like, I watched her reactions and her videos analyzing the trailers that came out for season three. She's going to do a Colin character analysis video, but that might not come until after season three, part two. And, um, she's, you know, just doing all these discussion videos. She even did, and it's been really entertaining, and it's still, I still enjoy them. So, if I'm going to watch anything, it's at least going to be that. Um, I do want to watch the Pink Podcast and they're watching all the episodes of part one and then part two when they do those. But because they're kind of being coming out with them more slowly, like one at a time, I'm waiting until they have all four episodes out and then I'll bench all four of their viewings of the first four episodes. Because those guys are hilarious. Those two are, I love those two. They are a delight to watch. They're so much fun and just their reactions I don't know if I could ever do it because when I watch, like, I'm so boring. And plus, when I'm watching something, I'm not always watching it. Like, I'm not always watching it for, like, where I'm just watching it. Just watching whatever. I'm usually, a lot of times, I am multitasking and doing stuff, you know, watching YouTube videos or something. And which I know, crazy, but I just got into the habit of doing that, even if it's something I've never haven't seen yet. But I did, the first time I watched part one of season three, I did watch it when I was at my sister's house. And I was just kind of tired, so I just wanted to watch it. So I didn't even bother getting on my computer at that time. And plus, my the desk where are we in their basement, where, we, where my parents and I stay, the desk is against the wall, and then the TV's off to the, you know, so I can't really, I mean, I, mean, I could carry, have my laptop on my lap. And she does have something like a little, you know, stool or whatever where you can put your feet and, you know, or, or it's more like a, like a, a bin or not a bin, but like a, a chest, a, you know, a chest. But then I would, you know, I would either have to have my computer on my lap or I would be hunched over the whole time anyway. So that time I just watched it while I was, you know. On the and plus my she because they only have one bedroom down there, my parent I sleep on the, my sister sets up a bed on the couch so that was my bed anyway, so I just kind of watched it so that's the only reason why I didn't do it this time that time. And I always realized that it probably would be better that way if I did just watch instead of doing because oftentimes I'll miss stuff, little things here and there. But it's a hard habit to break. Anyway, so like I said, I bring that up because it's slow. it was, you know, I decided to, you know, not focus so much on that and get back to focusing on my reading. So currently I'm still almost very close to being finished with The Harrow by, um, Jose, um, I still don't know how to say his name. I, part of, you know, I was hoping that if I did, like, the original plan for this week or this coming week was to go with my mom to my grandma's. There's this big event in our community, and we're going to get a lot of business on our store. So, I kind of didn't want to be here for that. But then, like, the, my um, 
my manager was like, you know, we need people here. We need all you guys here, so don't even bother asking. And she just never gave me that time off, even though I asked in advance, which is fine. Because in the end, I realized that I would be missing Bridgerton anyway. Because my grandma does not have access to Netflix, and I would have to watch my computer and get my mom's password. Because if she owns the Netflix, the Netflix account is just... She's the one who controls how to get access to it. So, um, so in the end, it's probably better that I'm here because then I could just easily watch the show, even if I, even though I still have to work. But it was, you know, one of these. But listen, I didn't want to. I originally didn't want to be here, and so I bring that up because when I went there, if I was going to ask my grandma how to pronounce this guy's last name, this guy's name, because she is Filipino, so she would know how to pronounce the guy's, the guy's first name. But then I'm not going after all, and I'm almost done with the book anyway, so by the time my mom went, I would just, like, I would have to write the name down and everything, and, or show, you know, show my grandma the, the cover, the book on Goodreads or something, so... Anyway, I, um, I'm just continuing to guess, but I do know how to say this. Jose, his last name. Um, it's really good, a very emotional story, and it's about displacement and trying to find your, like, in a main character who is Filipino, but he was taken out of the Philippines and got to live a privileged life in the United States, and he wants to reconnect with his roots. Kind of like what I'm doing right now, except he actually is able, he goes to the Philippines, and he's studying and learning the history and everything, but... Because he was privileged to live in the States and did not suffer and go through what the people that lived in the Philippines did. It puts him in a very awkward position of he wants to understand, but he will never truly understand. Like, he can sympathize, but he can't empathize with these people. With his people. So, it's it's a very emotional story. And I don't know, because I read one or before I decided to read it. I read one review who was saying that they feel like it's kind of hard to really appreciate this book if you don't understand the history, if you don't know the history. And maybe, yeah, maybe you benefit not necessarily jumping into this book first, but jumping into other books that kind of highlight what the people, the peasants, and all the people, all the Filipinos went through by reading other books about it before you get to this one. Um... But I think it's uh, it's amazing. It's very emotional, like I said, very heartfelt story. And you know, maybe there are people that can relate to relate to. It. Maybe not exactly the same way, but relate to the idea of being an out, being like connected to a group of people, but feeling like an outsider because you didn't experience. Even though you are, this is part of your heritage, part of your identity, you still can't exactly feel the way these people feel because you were fortunate to escape. The hardships and the suffering and the cruelty that these people experience. Anyway, so this is really good. I'm almost done. Like, there's, it's one of those books where there's only a hand, there's 27 chapters, but they're long, but some of the chapters are a bit long. So, and it's a very slow moving story. I know, you know, in fact, I've noticed that with the books that are like, they look short, they don't look that long, but then. Because they don't have that many chapters. But then you read it and you realize that the chapters are really slow and very long. Not that these chapters are super long. I mean, but it's still, you know, it's still taking me a while to get through it. And and there are moments where I'm, you know, where me reading it in bed is, you know, is not really good. Because if I'm tired, then I'm going to fall asleep and not be, you know, like I missed... Like, I read up to a certain chapter last night, but then the chapter before the the chapter that I decided to stop it, I probably don't remember some of that stuff in that chapter, the previous chapter. I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense or not, but... Anyway, so this... So I'm reading that. I'm hoping to get to... This one I want to pick up next, English Passengers. Um by Matthew Neal and um because again it kind of goes along with the my um my theme of traveling and you know sailing on the ocean and all that although this um this is a little more loosely connected because it's 
not actually there. He's not traveling on a ship or anything and to be a hero. He's just traveling to different, you know, different countries. But, um, I did attempt to read this, but then again, I made the mistake of reading it while I was going to, well, I was right before I went to bed and I kind of fell asleep and was like, okay, I'm just going to have to come back to this. And then I decided, let me just finish, finish this. And then I will get back to, I will get to, I will start reading this. Anyway, so I still have not decided, you know, narrowed down my pile of books. They're, in fact, they're still on the floor in the space where I'm filming. So I haven't narrowed it down. I mean, I do have a pile of books that I'm leaning more towards. But I still have all these other books. And I want to try to get to books that I've, that I started reading and I haven't finished. Like books that I'm in the halfway point or close to the end. Like that's what I did with the last book to end my May reading. I read, uh, the last book I read was The Name of the Rose because I was almost done with it. And I was able to finish it just in time. Just by, the, um, just right on the 30, 31st. Um, and I wanted to, I was thinking about doing that for Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Just pick that one up and then try to finish it before, but I don't know yet. Um... But I don't know what I'm going to read next after, you know, like, I keep thinking about picking up Empire the Vampire and one for my enemy and going with my theme of, you know, a supernatural read, supernatural summer, like summer where I read supernatural inspired books. Um, but then I also, sorry, let me see if it's right. I also wanted to, um, I, I still have Ship of Magic I need to get back to, so I need to pick that one up soon. But, you know, this is one of the books, if you watched my latest book haul, I just bought this one. And I keep thinking about this one. Um, which is cover is so striking. Like, I'm wondering where, what is in here, where this is going. Like, what is this? Like, is this some kind of temple or whatever? Like, or is it some kind of piece of art? It's such a striking, such a weird cover. Um... But yeah, I want I keep thinking about this book. Because and especially it's also by an author that I read before. And also by some booktube, you know, and a lot there's booktubers that I really enjoy watching that they always talk about this author. Um Caroline Marie Reads and Emmy always talk about Kaju Ishiguru and you know, like they um like I think it's Caroline who loves Never Let Me Go. It's her favorite. And I, I do want to read more Japanese. Lyrics, although this is not... The author is Japanese. But I think his books are a mixture of Japanese literature and English literature. Um, because he did live... I do believe the author lived in England. But he was born in... Born in Japan. Um, this, But this always happens to me. And, you know, where... And I, I said this in the last video, and I know someone commented and basically and pointed out that that is the plight that a lot of people experience, where they always want to read their new books that they just get, but then they have so many old books, books that they've had, not physically old, but books that they've had for a long time, that they're like, oh, I need to read those first before I get to the new books. And that's always my, you know, and so yeah, we, I didn't, I'm, not surprised. I'm sure there are a lot of people like me who have to have that struggle. I mean, I don't know if I, I asked anyone in that video if I was like, do any of you guys have that problem? But I think deep down I know that I'm not the only one who has that problem. Everybody has that problem where it's that that's the dilemma of a reader. You know, especially if you are a reader, one of the readers that has your own personal library, like your own collection of books. I mean, it's almost easier for the people that don't constantly want feel the need to the people that, you know, it's, like, I still, like, first, I do love buying books. I still love it. I love the idea of going to the bookstore, finding a new book that you never read before, whether it's a, actually a new book or a book that is older, but you haven't read it yet. The thrill of that, that feeling you get. Like, I always get that excited, giddy feeling when, you know, my parents offered to take me to the bookstore. Like, the one that's not, that I have to drive to. Because one of the downsides about not driving is if I want to go to the bookstore, I either call Uber or wait to see if my parents can bring drop me off. But yeah, I always get the giddy feeling when I go into the bookstore. I mean, I got that feeling when we were 
you know, back up and when we were um, visiting my sister and my, my friend and Larissa offered to take me to the bookstore and buy me a book for my birthday. Again, that feeling. And plus, it was also extra strong, I think, because that was the bookstore I grew up with. And it was, you know, so it was like I was revisiting my childhood, you know, bookstore. It's, you know, it's kind of like, it makes me think of that a song, this, um... That there's the song from, um, I think it's Starlight Express. I know I, you know, um, and I know that in Glee, Kurt covered the song, sing the song, um, as if, as if we never said goodbye. That, that day when I got, I mean, I'm being dramatic, I know, but it felt, it was kind of like that, like, you know, going into that bookstore for my childhood, although it was very different. Like, first of all, they had to get rid of the cafe because, you know, and, and then, like, the way it's set up now is very different than how it used to be set up, and it has a lot, it's wide, the, the, it's kind of wider the, with the way the shelves are. But anyway, um, yeah, it, it felt like, kind of like how the message of that song, which is you're coming, you're coming back, and it's as if you never left kind of feeling which yeah again I'm being dramatic but that, that literally just popped in my head that song um anyway so I'm well, I'm gonna put this down because I'm not talking about the, I'm not technically talking about this specifically but yeah I would love to come you know I always you know I always could never decide like I, I look at these books and think oh I should just read it but then my guilty conscience is like oh but you have so many books that you've had on your shelf for years now and you haven't read them you need to get to them. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I mean, even just talking about it now, I'm tempted to like, I want to start reading this book now. Which, that's another thing that always happens to me. When I talk about the book, all of a sudden I want to read it right in the moment as I'm talking about it. And I can't just read in the middle of my filming, so I have to settle. And I also like, especially if it's a short book like Via Hero, I want to finish that one first before I jump into another book. And... This one is, it's a, it's a chunky book. It's, oh, and I appreciate the large, it's large print, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's in the 500s. It's, yeah, so, I, again, I might just do that. I might just start reading this after I'm done, you know. But, again, I want to finish this, and... You know, I always debate with myself. I'm going to be honest here. And I, I try not to focus on the number of books I'm reading. You know, and I do enjoy my reading when I'm reading a book. It's not like I'm reading so fast because, oh, I've got to mark off this. It's not like necessarily that where I'm just reading, speeding through my books. It's just, I don't want to stop reading. I want to keep going. I want to keep reading. And then there's, I have so many books Going back to that dilemma of wanting to read the books I just purchased, but then having books I've had on my shelf for years, wanting to read those. And so it's more like, I don't want to stop reading because I want to, you know, I don't want to get down to a zero TBR, but I want to read my book, all my books, or as many as I can, but I'm, in, in, at least I'm not trying to rush. But I always feel like, now I don't remember what my train of thought was. Um, oh, I remember. It, like, I always, the dilemma I have is, do I read, pick up a 500 plus page book, knowing that it's going to take me a while to read it, and wanting to be able to have something to talk to, a book that I finished, that I can talk to you guys, on for when I wrap up the month and that was a good thing about like doing quarterly wrap-ups is I mean that's why I started doing that because then I could I wasn't feeling rushed to finish a 500 place page book and then decide okay I better pick up a shorter book it's not gonna take me as long um and the only problem I ran into was that I was not fin I was forgetting to do wrap-ups for you guys and I'm sure you guys are not going to get mad at me if I didn't do a wrap-up. I mean, at least I don't think you are. Hopefully you're not. 
But I still, I would still feel bad, and then I would, you know, you know, rush it. But then the other thing I would run into is I wouldn't remember my feelings on the book sometimes or what, like, certain details that I, that I feel like or I should, I should recall you guys, like, the names of characters and stuff like that. I wouldn't remember those. So, that, hence why I've gone back to monthly wrap-ups because at least I'll remember what I read within the cup the for those three weeks three or four weeks but yeah I um so it's like do I read shorter books that I have something to talk to you guys about or do you know and like I said I'm not trying to rush my reading I'm trying to take my time and enjoy my reading and I am enjoying my reading I'm always enjoying my reading but I do worry you know but then I and I don't want to give the impression that I'm you know because and that I'm just focused on the shorter books just to you know if that makes like um uh, I'm rambling here um trying to figure out exactly what I want to say is again my conflict is I don't want to give the impression that I'm just trying to speed through my works. But I do want to be able to have something for you guys to talk about. More than two books. I want to have... I mean, granted, what I could do is just be like... Instead of making them necessarily a, a wrap-up, make them more of a... You know, these are the books I finished, but also talk about the books that I'm still working my way through. If that, you know... um. But anyway, so, but I do have two books I've finished so far this month. I've, one of them was an audiobook. That was Tom Lake. I got that on Libby. I really enjoyed that. And it was, it was really cool having um, Meryl Streep narrate the book to me because I, I love her voice. She is soothing, so soothing and nurturing and her voice is such a comfort. And she's such like a mom in a good way though. Um, and I think she is a mom actually. I think she does have kids. Um. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do think she has kids. I would have to look that up, like on, you know, Wikipedia or something, or Google Google her and see the information about her. Um, it kind of made me, you know, and I, don't know, I guess there's something, like, it's kind of funny because her, Ann Patchett's other book, The Dutch House, also, like, Tom Hanks narrated that one. So I'm like, hmm, does she have a deal or something? Like, how, how does she get these these famous actors to narrate our books. Although actors, I think, are kind of perfect for narrators. I mean, not every... I'm sure not every actor has the ability to narrate an audiobook. But that's what they do. They, you know, that's what... Reading an audiobook is kind of like acting. It's just your... You know, it's almost like... It's like acting for an anime. You know, when you're doing an animated feature, you're just using your voice. So reading audiobooks is like that. So actors are actually a perfect, professional actors are perfect for that. And then, of course, I know they also have audiobooks where they do have a full cast reading the book, which I, I like when I, when, I mean, I don't get those that often. I haven't come across those that often whenever it's just going by whatever is available on my Libby app. But I think it does help immerse you in the story. And really you, the character, you can separate the characters in your mind. Now, there are some audiobooks, like The Lord of the Rings with, um, audiobook with Andy Serkis. I would love to get that one, but I would have to actually buy that one because that's not on my Libby. But I would love to buy that one and get it, but then, you know, buying audiobooks, I'm counting that to my budget, so I have to be very careful in deciding when I buy. Like, it's almost like I need to buy that first, but some of the audiobooks I want, I would love to buy and be able to listen to are, you know, cost- Maybe a little bit less than buying a physical copy. Or it's like, I would feel guilty because I'm, I already physically own the book. And it's like, do I need to buy the audiobook? I think that's being a little greedy. I mean, if you're that person, I'm not trying to say you're greedy. But for me personally, that's how I feel that. You know, I'm like, oh, I have to get the audiobook and the physical copy. But it would be kind of fun to listen to. Like, for example, listen to it the you know you know an audiobook version of it because it's such a long book i mean i i do have an audiobook version of count of monte cristo so i got away with that so i could probably get away with other stuff like do an audiobook 
buy an audiobook of Gone with the Wind and It and all that. That would that would be really fun. And I personally think it would be fun to listen to them in the car, but I'm not the driver. So I can't, I would have to, you know, listen via, you know, with my earbuds and all that. Like, my parents wouldn't want to listen to my audiobooks. They'd rather listen to talk radio, like, or, you know, podcast about reality shows. But sometimes, yeah, I do get sucked into those. I admit that. You know, which is really annoying because it's hard to ignore. It's very hard to ignore those podcasts that they like to watch. That, I mean, listen to. You know, I mean, the craziness of people is, like disgusting but can be also very fascinating and like they really got into Vanderpump Rules so they listen to the uh, podcast where people talk about Vanderpump Rules and it's like oh my god that these people are nuts these people not the not the people who host the podcast but the people that they're talking about <laughs> anyway so um I don't know so I might read on unconsoled i might just pick it up anyway and be like screw it i'm just gonna read it um but again i have so many other books and i wanted to do jane austen july but i don't know if that will happen like i mean it might and like i said we're, we're still thinking about september going to london so i almost want to read british related content um before then and jane austen july would be perfect i mean the only reason i would be doing july is because of jane austen july um, but it's just, I don't know. It's, we're gonna see how it goes. I mean, I could read Unconsult. That might be, let me see. I mean, it, it's Central European. Um, so I don't know if he's in England or not, or maybe he does a lot of traveling. I don't know the main character of this book so and then also recently got the, the letters for Tolk from Tolkien and I want to read that too as soon as I that came in the mail I wanted to read that and the same with you know and then I keep I just watched one of my you know regular channels that I watch talking about th this one reading this one this month and I'm like oh I do need to get back to this book that's also where I get hindered. I mean, is that all of a sudden, like, a booktuber brings up a book that I've been meaning to read or want to read, and where it's a book like, you know, and it's like, oh, I want to read that one. Or the other thing I noticed that I do is a lot of booktubers that I watch will influence my reading. Well, influence my, ins my reading inspiration. Um... Like, for example, Mike from Mike's book reviews, you know, all of a sudden I want to read... Like, you know, fantasy, may possibly trying to get back to attempting sci-fi. And, like, he did, he read in, um, Empire of the Vampire, and he just bought, and he also recently bought the, um, the sequel to it. So, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I want to read that. Or he will inspire me to read, Stephen, remind me to read some Stephen King. Like, I have all my Stephen King books that I haven't read yet. Um, and it's... Like, there, there's just certain booktubers that make me, it motivate me to read certain types of books. Um, all of from Book Olive, you know, all of a sudden I want to read some of my nonfiction. Or I want to give Amor Toll, get, get more into Amor Tolls. Like, she's a big fan of his, and, um, or, like, she, although really it's probably more that she loves Rules of Civility as her favorite book. Um, I don't know if she's read The Lincoln Highway yet. I have been meaning to get to that one. I keep delaying it, you know, because I haven't bought it yet. And I don't know if it's going to be my kind of book. And if I buy it, I would want to buy it like a paperback and not like $20 to $30. Um, I would rather get an FBU's bookstore. <sighs> anyway, so, um, that's... That's really all I guess I'm going to say. I just wanted to update you guys on my reading. Um, I, I've been mostly focused on this book. So I, you know, and like I said, I hadn't done a lot of my reading. My reading has slowed down the first week of June because of, I'm so focused on Bridgerton. 
And I know that nothing's wrong with that. I mean, my, you know, my friends would be like, go with the flow, watch all the Bridgerton videos you want. And again, and I know that's fine. It's just, like I said, I was feeling very, it was, you know, the anxious the anxiety of the anticipation and so obsessed to the point of getting emotional and be like, what if this happens or what if that happens or, you know, remember, it's going to end happy because the first two seasons end happy with the, the main couple and everything and they're not going to be the main couple in season four. It's going to be a different couple. So, of course, it's going to be happy and it's going to get resolved. But I was still getting very emotional and it was driving me crazy, giving me anxiety. So, I do kind of understand why people were annoyed. Like, before, yes, in the beginning, I was like, oh, it's only a few weeks. You can, you'll be fine. But the part, the you know, between part one and part two, but it's like now I'm like... It's, oh my god, I'm counting down the days when it can't get here soon enough. I'm like, okay, I, I probably shouldn't be so judgmental of those people that are, you know, mad at Netflix right now for doing that. Um, but it's almost here. It's, I think, six days as of today. And I will be at work, like I said, but I will have to, as soon as it gets on the Netflix, I will. I am working that day, but, you know, the next day I'm not working. I mean, unless my manager changes my schedule again at the last minute, I know I'm not working the next day, so I can stay up late. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to go. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying your reading right now. Um, as always, I love to know what you're reading. Feel free to share in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you want to see more from me. No, no pressure, but if you do, you know, it really will help. My channel, you know, it will really help. And I'm sorry, I know it's the quiet line everybody says, but I think from my what I've seen so far, it's true. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you are enjoying your reading so far, even if you don't want to tell me what, even if you end up not sharing what you're reading. And if you want to know when I'm uploading my videos, as soon as I upload them, please click the bell icon below. That will notify you. And I will talk to you all later. All right. Bye.